Welcome to the Big Kickoff League of Ireland podcast with myself, Roy Shanahan, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Bohemians Director of Football, Pat Fenlon. Pat, welcome to the Big Kickoff League of Ireland podcast. Good afternoon, Roy. Thank you very much for having me on. Cheers. Ah, listen, I'm delighted to have you on, and thanks very much for coming on. Before we get to kind of talking about your role as Director of Football, this is the third time you've gone back to Bowes. So what, what's kind of luring you back? What, what is it that they have over you? I don't know. I was probably... I was here as a player, obviously, a long, long time ago, and uh, we had a bit of success. And uh, as a manager, uh, we had plenty of success. And it's just a place I always felt comfortable in. Um, <clears throat> you know, and you get you get uh, clubs like that in, in your career. Um, and I've been fortunate to, to play for the club and manage the club and now come back in this role. So I suppose I'm lucky in that regard to get three opportunities to come back to one club. I said the same in you get two opportunities to go back there. I've got three to come back to Bow, so that's brilliant. How did the role come about? What what was there was there a time that you thought you might stay at Limfield longer, or and did this jump out of nowhere, or how did that kind of work? Yeah, it probably did come out of nowhere a little bit. Um, obviously there was contact uh, with Bohemians and myself, um, and obviously something I was interested in. I uh, had four and a half years at Windsor and four and a half really enjoyable years, and um, probably over them. The last couple of years, my circumstances at home, family have changed a little bit. Um, so that probably probably came up at the right time for me to come back to Dublin. Um, I did love working at, at Linfield, to be honest. I did as a player and I did as a general manager. Um, but it was also time for a challenge as well. We had a, a plan at Linfield over five years and a strategic plan. And most of that is in place now and the club's in a good place and hopefully will kick on. Um, mm-hmm. And then the challenge, obviously, like you said, I've... You know, with a good working relationship at, at Bo- Bohemians, um, and the chance to come back was was probably too too good to turn down. To be honest, absolutely. It's listen. I, I've been out there a couple of times. It's a great little club, great little a- atmosphere. Uh, they might kill me for saying little, but you know what I mean. There's always sort of a good atmosphere when you go over there. The role that you have now, uh, director of football. Mm. Firstly, how does that differ from the general manager role that you were at Limfield? I think the general manager role at Linfield was comes in everything in the club. Uh, you know, from you know, it was probably more uh, around the other areas of the club. Um, obviously, worked closely with the manager and head of recruitment around that side of the club. Um, but then the general running the football club on a day to day basis was more re- my remit at Linfield. This is different. This is purely football, um, and it's it's uh, it's obviously something I've I've had a long career in, uh, both playing, managing director of football at Waterford as well. So um, I suppose the difference is that this just gives me input and and a look into the football side of the club. Um, and that's probably the difference where Limfe was 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 a bigger bigger job in relation to, to the portfolio around the club. Yeah. Um, so it is, a, it is a different role. Okay, so give us an idea then because <clears throat> one of the reasons that I contacted you was because there was a lot of doubt over did Bowes need the role um, of a director of football? Um, I'll just go back. Matt Devaney said that director of football role is something the board has given careful consideration in recent months. So careful consideration to me means the board wanted to ensure that they were getting their value for money uh, if they decided to fill it. So firstly, I suppose the first part of the question is, what is your role on a, on a day-to-day basis? And secondly, how, how do you give a value for money? Well, I think I would have looked at it a little bit differently. I think the value on it is, you know, what, what you bring to the table. I think the club is structured really well um, and it's thriving off the pitch. And yeah, there's no doubt about that. But it has to be, that has to mirror what's going on um, in the football side of the club. There's great um, things being done on the football side of the club at the moment before I came in. But it's probably someone to bring that all together to make sure that there's there's a plan over a period of time. Um, you know, and obviously I fit that role from probably an experienced manager to, like I said, as a general manager and a director of football at other clubs. Um, so hopefully I can bring that expertise and um, professionalism and experience to the role. Um, and if I didn't think I would, I wouldn't have taken the job. So yeah. I think what the role is, there's all different areas of the football club from a football aspect. And mine is purely football. So you've obviously got, you know, boys and girls, underage teams, you've got academy teams, you've got ladies, women's senior team, you've got obviously the men's senior team. So there's a there's a wide range of football involved in the cl- football club and 
the club has dro- grown so much off the pitch that it's probably, you know, probably needed someone in that role to make sure that it develops on the pitch as well as as quick as as it's developing off the pitch. So, like I said, you're hoping the role mirrors what's going on off the pitch, um, and that will be my my role to pull that all together, to to help everybody in the, the departments that they're in. Like I said, there's loads of good work going on at the moment on all these areas. Um, but it's 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 overseeing that and making sure that we have a plan going forward. Yeah, I. Uh, you, but if you if you're going to match yourself up with what they're doing off the pitch, you, mm. you've you've got a big job in your hands because they're doing absolutely brilliant work off the pitch. Uh, just marketing the club and getting the club out there and the name of the club, it's uh, it's been fantastic uh, and and benefits the league as well in in, in every direction. So yeah, but listen, it's a, it's a big football club, so it should be. Yeah mirrored on the pitch you know and that's not putting pressure on anybody that's what Bohemians is as a player yeah. here there was pressure to perform when I was here as a player there was pressure to perform as a manager and it's now different now absolutely yeah no I agree 100% what's your what's your what's your daily role what's your daily basis so just say you're going to ask me this but it's very difficult to say what it is because well, what did you do today well my daily <laughs> role would be obviously most days I'll go and see the manager before training we'll have a chat and the last few weeks a little bit been a little bit hectic it's sort of settled down a yeah. little bit now that the window closed yesterday so um my role will probably over the next few weeks will 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 we'll differ a little bit in relation to where we where we've been since i come in been in the in the door three or four weeks and in that three or four weeks we've had to obviously concentrate everything on trying to recruit some players into into the squad we're short defensively and uh, we've brought in some quality in that area so um, a lot of that time, a lot, a lot of the time so far would have been spent in that that regard. And now that that window is closed and we've got a squad on the pitch ready to go, um, we'll start to look at right through the other aspects of the club and how we can help all the people in there. I probably haven't even got around to meeting everybody in all the yeah. department. So there's a big job of work to be done over the next few months in that regard, seeing what the structures are like, how they're working, how they're functioning, how we can help. Um, so I think... I think a football club is not like any other job where you, you probably know exactly what you, you have a plan, obviously, but it can change so much over a period of time. And even in days, um, like it's, it, it is, it's a 24 seven job. There's no, there's no other way of describing it. And um, like I said, it can differ uh, most days and it normally does. And you, and you wouldn't have it any other way, Pat, because no, if, it's that, in, if it's in the blood, yeah. it's in the blood, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But also you've got experience of dealing with that over a long period of time and the roles I've had. So nothing that comes up surprises me in relation to football. Yeah, teams, to be no, honest. No, it may surprise yeah. other people yeah, that haven't been involved in that area of the game, but it doesn't surprise me. No. Yeah, absolutely. So when you look at, say, say Manchester United, you know, everyone knows that Manchester United would have a, a philosophy on football, of attacking football and bringing youth players through. Is there something that you're going to try develop within the club, an identity, a philosophy, whatever you want to call it, that'll run through the whole club? Um, because it's something that a lot of teams try to do, a lot of clubs try to do, and then they then they bring in managers that don't sort of match that kind of identity or philosophy. So what kind of view have you got on that? Yeah, I think that's important, obviously, because we've got Young Academy now, um, you know that they they've got to, to learn the game, but there's all different ways of playing the game as well. So you don't you don't just learn one way to play. So that philosophy right through the club, you know, is try to, to develop that winning philosophy as well. Adapt. Um, you know that and that's that's so important at senior level, but not as important at underage level. So it's trying to marry both of them together. Um, you know, obviously, and that's part of what I'm saying about a planning process in relation to players recruiting a player, what type of player you want to bring into a system what type of system we have in the club at the moment, you know, what we have through the, the underage system that obviously has a progression into this, the senior setup that is not a blockage for that as well for our young players to develop. So like I said, there's a, there's a big job of work to do and it's only, it's only probably in the next few weeks where you can sit down and look at everything. And um, now that we have got the window out of the way and start to plan that process. And um, there's a lot of the good building blocks in already. There's a lot of good work being done uh, under previous regime. So it's not inventing the wheel. To be honest, yeah. it's just trying to put a structure on and make sure that it fits what Bohemians is at the moment um, and how we take it forward for everybody in the club. Okay. Now, I have a couple of questions from a couple of Bowes fans. And I, I, they're questions that I, uh, I, I probably thought about before and, and, and would have put to you. But Daz has asked, can Bowes stop 
the high turnover of players and try and put a team together. Now, this is something that we have discussed over. And poor, poor Keith Long had done an unbelievable job getting reforming a, a group together every year and probably exceeding uh, expectations. Well, maybe not from the Bose fans, but maybe from outside of that because it's so hard to get a team together uh, one season, get them to gel and then try to do it all over again. So what are the plans uh, around that? Well, that's what I'm talking about in relation to recruitment and what's in the club at the moment. So there's obviously been a massive turnover of players in the last 18, 24 months. A lot of them have been really good players mm. um, that have left the club to, to go elsewhere. Um, so obviously that's always going to happen if you're producing good players, you know, they're going to move on to better things. That's just football in general. Um, I think in air regard that if that is happening, that we're, we obviously have a plan to replace you know, and like I said, whether that's through our own system or from the outside. And obviously then if we are losing players that the cl- club is properly compensated for them players moving on, that we can reinvest that back either into the team or into the underage academy setup. So it's it's part of the bigger picture. Yes, absolutely. We've got to stop the number and the turnover of players that are coming in and out of the club on a regular basis. Yeah, we've got I think it's just stuff. the high numbers though, Pat. It's not necessarily yeah, it is. that it's, people get turned yeah. over. Absolutely. It is a, it is a high number, but, uh, you know, I think that's 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 probably one of the bigger parts of the plan is that we have continuity within the f- football side of the club, um, that we, we we have a base and a core of players, and you're always wanting to strengthen the squad. All managers will be the same. Will always want to strengthen the squad at, at, at certain times of, of the year when the window's open. Um, but if you take away we are this window, you know we're look, looking around three or four weeks into the job, and you're looking around for three or four defenders, which is obviously not ideal. Yeah. And so it's to make sure that we don't get into that situation on a regular basis and that we're able to build a squad that's capable of challenging for trophies. Um, obviously, we we want to have a pathway as well for our younger players, which I think Bowes have probably done better than anybody over the last four or five years. Yeah. Um, so it's important that that avenue there as well, that there's not a block up in that. But it, it is really important that we don't come to the end of the season and there's so many players... We're uncertain whether they're coming or going or staying. Um, so again, that's a planning process. That's putting things in place, systems in place to make sure that that doesn't happen. Part of that, though, your job is to discuss with the board about certain players and whether financially it would be, I suppose, giving the thumbs up for someone maybe to get a longer contract because you view that this could be someone that could uh, could give you that money down the road that you could sell on. Like, let's just say uh, young Evan Ferguson who went away that time and he's gone over to Brighton. That you see, you can see certain players who are who are going to be players. You just can see them. Is there is there those discussions that you would be having? Listen, this is probably one we need to get nailed down. Yeah, there's always them discussions. Like I said, if, you, if you're producing good young players that are coming through into your first team at a very young age and they're obviously going to attract interest. So, like I said before, it's it's a plan for them young players, you know, with with, with sort of special players like Kevin that plan for him. He was always going to leave Bowes. Um, you know, it was always going to be very difficult to keep him because of what he has. Yeah. Um. So, so it's 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 important that, like I said, there's there's, you know, if he does leave, well, then we have to be looking behind that, watching the system behind that, or. If he's in the team, he wasn't a main part of the team when he did leave. So no, yeah. it's probably unfair to to, to, to to rate that one similar to, to, to having replacements ready to go. Uh, but more along the lines, Pat, that you may see someone like that coming through. I, it's very hard for some of the clubs. That's already in place, Roy. That in, that's in place before I get into the club that we have a system in place that if that we've got good young players in, that we will be in a position to to be able to to, to to make sure that they, they remain Bowes players for a period of time that okay. suits the club. Um, and and, and to say, gain financial, uh, a good financial gain from them because that's really where the, the league has kind of let itself down, hasn't it? Letting players well, go. I think some have. If you, if you look at a case of, you know, I think I've been pleasantly surprised since I've come in that the players that have left the club that we have, that have moved across the water for the field, uh, the deals in place for them are really, really good that the club have, have got in place, which is brilliant. And because we know if they're successful, then there's a benefit to Bohemians going forward. Good. Um, so that's already in place. Like I said, there is a lot of good building blocks in the club. Um, you know, my job is to come in and, and sustain that, maintain it and drive it on. 
Um, but you know the club should be given credit for there. That's there and, and already in place. I think the bit that we probably miss is making sure that we've got replacements, people okay. ready to go if we are losing players. Um, and you're always going to lose good players. That's just a fact. We don't want to lose them to clubs in Ireland. If we can help it, our better players, we want to lose them or they go away and, and they make better careers for themselves. That's great because that means that Bohemians have helped them in their development. And some of the underage teams in Dublin particularly have helped them in their development. So so we want to have that coming through the system all the way through for Bowes. But I think, you know, it's fair to say that the system that's there in relation to compensation and players leaving the club is really, really strong and really good at the moment. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. And um, every other director of football and uh, club chairman, I'll be looking for the same answer off them because we do. We want the league. We want the league to blossom, you know, and because there's there's really good talent coming through now. And you just want to, you know, if, if we're, we're going to pass them on, you want to benefit from that so we can produce more. And it all goes up towards the Ireland team and, and, and you know, uh, giving us those great days out as well as in Europe. We've looked at both teams in Europe over the last couple of years and it's been really exciting. So uh, we, we just want to see more exciting football. Well, and that's one of the ways. I think it, what you're trying to is is we've said I've said this before is develop an industry for the game here. Yeah, you know, exactly. so we're producing good young players that we should be properly getting compensated from. That funds can go back into developing the game. You know, that doesn't mean it goes back into spending on players' wages, but it can certainly go back in to develop facilities and how we can make players better. You know, and that's like I said, that's developing that culture right through the league. It's not just Bohemians; it's developing right through the league, so we can build an industry in the game here. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's what's changed over the last while is that that vision is there from most people. So that's good. Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Now, listen, Oshin O'Neill sent in a question and Daz kind of asked the same question uh, as well. He says, I would like to know more about how we're recruiting or scouting internationally. Now we're seeing more players from outside of Ireland uh, slash the UK in the league. Yeah, well, I think, again, that's another another area that we've we've looked at since i've come into the club we have um brought in dave henderson as a head of recruitment and development we're in the we're in the club i've worked with dave at numerous clubs and his record speaks for itself he's brought a lot of the good players that were at bows previously to the club you know so it's an asp- it's an area that we're looking at because the pool is so small in Ireland. we've got to look yeah. outside and particularly this window where we come in and most of the players are so- signed up um, to clubs already so we have to look outside to see if we can get some diamonds from somewhere else around around Europe and um, we'll continue to do that we have a structure in place now that we will monitor obviously players at home and abroad um, and like I said that'll be part of the bigger process and in, in how we're recruiting and why we're recruiting and what areas we're recruiting in so I think you know that's a big part of my job is to make sure that recruitment uh, plan is in place and fully functioning and functioning properly that we don't end up in a situation where we are at the, where we were uh, presently. Um, so there is a plan there, like I said, and the recruitment end of it is so important now for football. And I think that's also important. You're talking about developing the game, even in around recruitment of coaches, you know, and making coaches better. That, that's that's all stuff that, that we need to be better at. We know, and I don't just mean Bose, I mean everybody in the league, you know. But I think you can see from all the clubs, they're all looking outside. You know, it's it's not just it's not just bowers. Everybody's looking outside to seeking to make themselves better and bring better players into the league. Yeah. Is there a, a is, is there a balance to it, pa- uh, Pat? Is there a balance right. to it? Is there a balance to it? Like you look at Dun- yeah. Dundalk, Dundalk brought half of Europe in and it didn't quite work. <clears throat> yeah, well, listen, there's a balance to it, and there's obviously your recruitment has got to be good. You've got to trust people you work with. You got to get eyes on people as well. So there's 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 lots in that. Um, and that's what I'm saying but that's about having a plan that it's not you know just off the cuff recruitment that there's a plan in place and we'll certainly have that over the next number of months looking at the next window um, and that and that's like I said bringing Dave in is, is part of that process as well Brilliant okay so with your underage teams uh, girls and boys because the girls football we talked about this on the last pod- podcast we did I'm fairly sure that within time that women's football, girls' football here is going to be on par with the men's. They're really stuck into the football. There's a real sort of a wave uh, carrying them along at the moment. And the enthusiasm around it is absolutely fantastic. And I'm seeing this at local uh, football as well as League of Ireland football. Um, So with the girls and the boys, how do you make sure that Bohemians are, as you said, 
getting the prop best coaching for them and developing these players in the best manner. Yeah, well, like I said, I've, I'm I'm not long in the door, so I need to have a look in and see where we are. Um, there's a Trojan amount of work being done at boys and girls uh, within the club, um, you know, which are all volunteers as well. I'm working tremendously hard. So my role is to make that as easy as I can for them, to give them as much support I can in the background to make sure that develops. Like you say, the women's stroke girls game is developing at a huge rate and we want to be a part of that. It's massively important for the club going forward in relation to where the club is at the moment. Um, we want to make sure, and we and we see that as well, even in relation to not just the football side, but the attendance side of, of, of the game as well. And um, there's a lot more female people getting involved, which is brilliant. Um, but we have we will develop both sides. Um, you know, we've obviously got a, a senior women's team as well, and there has to be again a similar pathway yep. that we're talking about in the men's. That there's a pathway for young girls to develop through the club to end up playing in in, in the women's senior team. Um, it's no real difference. It's not like I said. It's 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 a very similar project. Um, you know, and, and and both of them are are high on the on the list to make sure that we we are making progress within both codes. Okay, so what is, again, Oshin asks, what is the overall plan for Bose over the length of your contract that you're looking to achieve? Oh, um, I suppose, <laughs> no pressure. like I said, it's a big question. It's, it's, it's one that can only answer in probably four or five years' time. But yeah. listen, I, I think is is structure, is making sure football structure is in place. There's a plan in place, you know, where recruitment and development is up to the standard we want. We want to help everybody within the club and the football structure as club to improve, you know, whether that's players, coaches, all them to make sure that we're improving at all levels. We want to improve obviously facilities, which is a big part of where the club are at the moment uh, with daily mount and obviously training facilities as well. So like I said, there's, there's, there's lots of improvement, but it's also important to say that there's a huge amount of work that's been done. Um, you know, I, I'm coming in on the back of a lot of that work already in place and, and, and making sure that that now develops that we get the best out of all them areas and departments in the club. And hopefully with my experience and knowledge, I can drive that forward. Um, but I think it's important to, to recognise that there's a huge amount of work done from the previous people that have been in the club, you know, from Keith's time as well, right through to now, uh, to Declan, um, and even on, on the academy inside and and the girls and the boys and the thing. So it's, it's making sure the club has grown so much off the pitch. I think the role is now important from a football perspective that, you know, the people that are doing the, the amount and the Trojan amount to walk off the pitch, you know, sometimes can be, that can be deflected around the football. So hopefully now I can take a little bit of that forward from my side, from the football side and let other people work on the other area of the club. Because like I said, there's a lot going on in the club at the moment in relation to stadium developments yeah. and all that sort of stuff. So, and we've seen how the club has grown commercially uh, off the pitch, um, you know, so hopefully I can take a little bit of pressure from a football perspective of the people who've been heavily involved in both aspects up till now. And for Declan, I mean, he, all he wants to do is look at, work with his team, do the training sessions. Yeah. Doesn't want to be worrying about anything else. And listen, that that's the bit I enjoy in real life. So I, I've been where Declan is on numerous occasions. And I had, when I went to Waterford with Alan Reynolds, it was similar. It was a case of, listen, at the end of the day, Declan's in charge. He's the boss in relation to players, recruitment. He, has, he, he makes all the decisions. And that's hard enough as it is. But when you add the rest of what a league of order manager has to go through at times, well then, like you say, the best thing I can do for Declan is that he gets on the training pitch every morning. He works for his team, and he doesn't have any of the headaches that yeah. probably oh, I've had Everyone to deal with had. the last couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's what the job is. That's part of the job. And if you're hurting a coach or a manager, you have to be able to let him do what he's good at. If you brought me into the club to coach and manage the team. Well, then you've got to give him the tools to do that. He can't be dragged away on other stuff. And that's so important, to, particularly to, to managers now, that the focus is on what you're doing Monday to Friday on the training pitch and on, the, on, on, on a match day and not get bogged down with the other stuff.